I look at the world today and look at the future, there are three big challenges that humanity and our planet faces. One is how to decarbonize our grid in the most cost-effective way, and in fact, as an economic imperative, and continue economic growth. The second question is, how do we provide access to affordable electricity and energy to every human being in this world so they have a shot at economic development and their own prosperity? That ought to be a human right. And finally, how do we protect, how do we make our energy infrastructure resilient and reliable against threats? And these are climate threats, cyber threats, and other threats that we may have. The, the history of the grid actually started with Nikola Tesla and Thomas Edison. It goes back to late 1800s. So it's been around for about 120 years. The architecture and the paradigm of the grid is still the same. We're about to have a major transformation in the grid. And that is because you have a, a lot of wind and solar that's going to be integrated onto the grid. And wind and solar fluctuate, OK? The sun sets and rises at known times. And the clouds come in, and the wind blows and doesn't blow. That, this grid, Tesla Edison grid, was never designed for that kind of volatility. At the same time, we're getting more devices in our homes. We're getting rooftop solar. We're getting electric vehicles. How do you manage the grid where you have volatility at both ends of the grid? The power of the data uh, is to really connect the two and ensure that the grid is reliable and stable moving forward. Part of the data is from your meters in your homes, and there's a lot of data coming out. And the other set of data, which we don't get to see, is what comes out of the transmission system. We haven't done much with the data. We could be much smarter. And I think what the world that we're entering today, you will see a hybrid version of this traditional electricity network on one hand, and what are called microgrids, where you have a local generation and a local neighborhood electricity and a community that is disconnected from the grid, but they have electricity services. And I think that's a very positive thing. About 1.2, 1.3 billion people have no access to the electricity grid. Sooner or later, when you have en enough economic development going on, they will want more electricity. Those are big challenges. Now, this is, happens once in a century. So for the students of today who are entering undergraduate and graduate studies today, I mean, this is a, an amazing time to be because there's so much of room for innovation that was not there before. The future grid is going to look quite different from what it is today.